Hello and welcome to another Algebra 1 video tutorial. In lesson 12, one will be graphing y minus k equals a times the quantity x minus h squared. So our goal will be to understand that the graph of a function with that equation is a parabola with a vertex at h and k, where the x value is h and the y value is k. So I'm going to open up GeoGebra and let us kind of move some sliders around and kind of give a feel for what that's going to look like. All right, in GeoGebra, what I've done is I've created some sliders so we can uh, manipulate the H, the A, and the K. So uh, watch as I move the A. You should know what A does. Uh, right now, A is positive 1, so the graph opens up. You should have known that. If I move it into a further positive number, it just gets steeper and steeper. Okay, so if I move A into the negatives, this parabola should open down. And if I make it a larger negative, it just gets... Uh, steeper steeper opening down okay so let's just leave a as positive one all right let's move the h value watch what happens as I'm at 2 right now and notice where the vertex is at an x value of 2 okay so it's x minus 2 puts the x value at 2 if I move that to 3 click on this one all right if I moved that to 3 to 4 to 5 see what happens okay now if I move it to where h is negative 1. Now, notice down here, this wouldn't, you wouldn't really write that as x minus negative 1. That would look like x plus 1. Um, same thing down here. But technically, in the equation, we're subtracting, but we're subtracting a negative, so it becomes positive. But the vertex is at negative 5 for the x value. Okay, So let's put it back over here at 2. Now let's move the k value. And now, if I bump it to 0, look where the y value of the vertex is. If I bump it to negative 1, negative 2, this in your equation would look like y plus 3, but that vertex for the y coordinate is down here at negative 3. So if we're to make it positive, y minus 4 is what it looks like, but that's because the k value is 4, because normally it's y minus k, so k is 4, that puts you the y value of the uh, vertex at 4. So let's say I want a parabola that opens down with a vertex at 8, negative 2. Could you do that? Could you move these sliders around to do that? 8, negative 2. So I need to move my h over to 8, positive 8, so it looks like x minus 8. Uh, I want it to open down, so I would need my a to be some sort of negative. Let's just leave it at negative 1. And my k, uh, let's say I wanted 8, negative 2, so I'd have to move my k to negative 2. But down here, it would actually look like y plus 2 even though in the GeoGebra equation I made it would still look like y minus negative 2, but when we write that, it would be y plus 2. So that's how to create a, an equation, manipulate this around. So hopefully you get a feel for what the h, the k, and the a do in the equation, and we have a theorem for that. And the theorem for that is called the parabola vertex theorem. So the graph of all ordered pairs x and y satisfy an equation of the form y minus k equals a times the quantity x minus h squared, the quantity squared. That's a parabola that has a vertex of h and k. So that's why this is called parabola vertex theorem, because we can get the vertex from this form of the equation. So let's try to just look at an equation and see if we can tell what the vertex is. So we give the vertex of the parabola with the equation y minus 8 equals 3 times the quantity x plus 15 than the quantity squared. Okay, now as I showed you in GeoGebra, we'd normally write this as x minus negative 15 because we're always going to do x minus and y minus. So if you see x plus, that meant it was minus a negative. So the x value of the vertex would be negative 15. So the y minus k, so y minus 8, so positive 8, that is the y value of the vertex. So we could give a real rough sketch of this. Negative 15, 8, somewhere up there. This 3 makes it open steeper than it would if it was 1, so it would be roughly a parabola that looks like that. But the main thing is, can you get the vertex from just looking at an equation in parabola vertex form? All right, consider the graph of y minus 3 equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared. It's quantity squared. And find the vertex without graphing this. Okay, so we have, this is normally going to be written as x minus negative 3, but that's not simplified, so it's always going to be written as x plus 3. So that means the x value of the vertex will be negative 3, and this is normally y minus, so that's good, so that's a 3. So negative 3, 3 would be the vertex because of that y minus k 
equals a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared with a vertex at h and k. So we have a vertex at negative 3 because this is a plus 3, so that meant it was x minus negative 3. And y minus 3, so y minus k, so k is 3. So negative 3, 3 will be the vertex of that parabola there. Consider the graph of y plus 9 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 4 squared. Maybe pause the video and see if you could get the vertex without graphing this. Try one on your own. It should, this is, should be pretty quick. All right. Uh, I'll do it here as well. Okay, so it's x minus 4, so the vertex is at 4. Y, minus, y plus 9, which we got to think of as y minus negative 9, so that is at 4, negative 9. All right, multiple choice. Which of the four curves is the graph of y minus 1 equals the quantity x plus 2 squared? Well, all you need to think about is where's the vertex of this, because the vertex of each of these is different. They all open up because um, we have a positive 1 there, so they all open up with the same steepness. Now, if this one was narrower than the other, then we'd have to figure out which one it was if they were all had the same vertex, but they don't. They're all different vertex, so we just look at, all right, the vertex here is going to be x minus negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2 and 1. The vertex at negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, that puts a vertex right there, so it has to be graph A. All right, a little bit more difficult here. Write an equation in vertex form for the graph of the given parabola. So the main thing you need to first pick out is where's the vertex at? In this case, the vertex is at negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. Okay, so that means we're going to go y minus the y value, 2, equals, now there's going to be some coefficient a. We'll figure that out later. And then x minus a negative 3. So that's going to become x plus 3, the quantity squared. Now we do need to figure out what that a value is. So let's use a, a known point. We could use negative 1, 0, negative 5, 0, or this point here we know, which is 1, negative 6. We have a couple, quite a few different points we could use for x and y to figure out a so that we only have one unknown. So here's our equation. We just need to figure out what a is. We know it's negative because this parabola opens down. Let's use 1, negative 6. 1, negative 6. 1 is x. So I'm going to have a times 1, the quantity 1 plus 3 squared, um, y, which is negative 6, so negative 6 minus 2, so I get negative 8 equals, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16, so a times 16, so 16a, divide by 16, so negative 8 sixteenths would be negative 1 half, that is what a is, so now we can rewrite our equation knowing what a is, so it's going to be y minus 2, equals a, we just found, negative 1 half times the quantity x plus 3 squared. And that would be an equation in vertex form of this parabola. And I will go through negative 5, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 7, negative 6, and it should go through 1, negative 6, along with having a vertex at negative 3, 2. All right. Um, suppose a rectangular box has a square base of side length s. Okay, square base, side length s, and let the height be h, which we've got to picture here. Now let's say the edges of the box add to 16 inches. What dimensions of the box will give the maximum surface area? So the largest surface area having this scenario, a square base and a height of h. So A, find the surface area of the box in terms of s, in terms of the length of the base. Okay, so on part A, surface area is going to be the area of each face. So we have a bottom face and a top face, which would be the same size. They are s squared, and there's two of them. So we'd have 2s squared plus, now we have an s by h, an s by h. There's going to be four of them, the front, the back, the left, and the right. There's going to be four of them that are 4shs. But it says in terms of s, so we, don't, we can't have an h in here, so we need to have uh, we don't need to get H related to S somehow, and we know that the edges of the box add to 16. So we need all the edges, so S, 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 and S, plus there's four up here, four down there, so we're going to have 8S, so they add to 16, so 16 is going to be 8S plus, and we have an H, an H, an H, an H, you can't see the one back there, but it's back there, 
And same thing with the square base. But anyways, we have another H, so there's four of those, four H's. So we need to solve this for H so we can replace H with something related to S. So I'd subtract 8S, so 16 minus 8S equals 4H. Divide everything by 4, so 4 minus 2S equals H. Now where H is, I can replace this with 4 minus 2S. And then I can get an equation for the surface area in terms of S. So the surface area is going to be 2S squared plus 4 four s h which now is four minus two s four minus two s all right so i have two s squared plus sixteen s minus eight s squared so that's going to give me sixteen s minus so i have two minus eight so that's negative six or minus six s squared or i could write that as negative six s squared plus sixteen s either way okay now, part B, we're going to graph that equation that we just came up with. So we'll have a, we'll be able to figure out what the maximum side length is for the base, and we'll get the maximum surface area as well. And then we can answer this question for part C, um, what dimensions of the box will give the maximum surface area. So drag out your calculator, and let's graph 16x minus 6x squared, where x is going to be the measurements of the base. Okay, uh, in your calculator, we go to y equals, we put in 16x minus 6x squared. Get an appropriate window. We only need to go probably negative 1 to 5 for the x, which is going to be the base. The total edge is only going to add up to 16, so we're going to not need uh, anything more than 16 for sure. Probably quite a bit less than that. And then the uh, surface area, uh, let's say it's probably not going to be anything more than 15. So let's look at that, graph it, and here's our... Probably. We're looking for this vertex here. So if you remember how to find the vertex from quite a, a, a couple chapters ago, chapter ten, uh, chapter nine, I believe. Um, so go to second trace, which is a calculate menu, and we want the maximum option four. And let's see, we need left bound. We need to be to the left of the vertex. So scroll to the left. I know I'm left there. Right bound. So I need to be to the right of it, and press enter. And my guess maybe somewhere up in there approximately all right appears that the maximum is 1.3 repeating roughly and the y value which is the surface area is about 10.6 repeating so 10 and two-thirds for the surface area is the maximum surface area and the maximum side length of the base is going to be one and one-third okay so now we go back to our equation and figure out what the dimensions for the height would have to be Okay, so we found the S value is going to be one and a third or four thirds inches. And we know that this maximum surface area is going to be 10 and two thirds square inches. Okay, but what we needed was the height as well. So we have the dimensions of the base, four thirds inches by four thirds, so one and a third by one and a third. And what's the height? Well, we got to plug that back into what we had for H. So we'd go four minus 2 times 4 thirds. So we'd end up with 4 minus 8 thirds. Well, this will be 12 thirds minus 8 thirds, which is 4 thirds. So the height would be 4 thirds inches. So this is 4 thirds by 4 thirds of an inch by 4 thirds inches. This is a cube. So this is a cube with edge length 4 thirds inches or one and one third inches. So a cube is going to give the maximum uh, surface area of this. So one and a third by one and a third by one and a third. So this picture wouldn't be a rectangular box, it would be a square box, which is a cube. Okay, so your assignment will be 12-1, page 720, 2 through 24 evens. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.